Welcome to Build. I'm Hannah Flint and we're live in London and we have a TV legend in the studio. He's been in such shows as Charmed, Nip Tuck and now he's here with his new show, uh, not new, season two, Marvel's The Runaway. Please everyone round of applause for Julie McMahon. Thank you. Thank you. Um, if if you would like to tweet any questions to Julian, you can tweet us at Build Series LDN, or if you're watching on Facebook, uh, you can just leave a comment um, underneath the video. So, Julian, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. Um, so, for people who aren't too sure about Marvel's Runaways, tell us um, tell us a bit about what the show's about. Okay, so here's the billboard, as you can see, one, two, three, four, five, six kids, right? It's based on a Marvel comic book, which is about six kids who find out that their parents are. Uh, somewhat um, uh, evil uh, business people. In the comic book, it's a little bit different from what it is for, from from the show. But in, in the in the show, they find out that their parents have been doing all of these kind of weird things that they didn't know about it, and they got they got upset about. Um, and so they decide to kind of come together, even though they're not friends, and they're kind of I keep calling them like a motley group of of get-togethers. Uh, so they kind of come together and form this kind of group that goes back to avenge their parents' wrongdoing. Um, and season one is actually kind of a bit of a, a bit of a, a prologue to the actual comic book. So season one, we kind of set up um, who the kids are, who the parents are, uh, why they're doing what they're doing. Uh, it's the introduction of my character, his name is Jonah. Uh, and then season two, which is uh, starting here in uh, January, is where we kind of pick up right at the end of season one. We see there's a bit of a standoff between Jonah, which is my character once again, and the kids and the parents. Um, and uh, season two, we pick up directly after that and uh, we kind of go off on a journey of the parents trying to get their kids back the kids trying to um, bring down their parents and the character of Jonah, and it's pretty pretty much mayhem from there on. Uh, well, we can see some of that mayhem. We have a trailer for season two. Um, I'm going to show now. That, that looks amazing. I managed to cap the first episode uh, of the new series. and it You've looks, seen it? Yeah, I saw it. I won't talk about it, no spoilers. Um, but it's brilliant. And I, I mean, tell us a bit more about your character, Jonah. So firstly, that's a pretty cool clip, right? I, that's a pretty, looks like a pretty cool show. Uh, as you can see, the show is pretty full on. I mean, it's kind of happening. Uh, I really enjoyed this season because we also shot a lot of stuff in, in 70 mil. It's all digital, but 70 mil. So everything's kind of got this epic kind of seismic vibe to it. Um, and as you can see from that clip, when I was talking about the mayhem, which is kind of what you referred to, you know, you got the parents again, you got the parents against Jonah, you got the kids against the parents, and you got Jonah against the kids. Does that make sense? Yeah. Kind of, <laughs> right? Look, it makes sense. Maybe not. That's okay, though. You will, you'll see it. It'll uh, make sense. Yeah, it'll make sense eventually. <laughs> um, and so it's this really cool kind of dichotomy of all these different things going on, and, and it's kind of action-packed and pretty full-on. So. I mean, as cool. you can see from the trailer, like, they have not, you know, they've, they've really sp splashed out on the CGI and the camera and the, the way it looks. I mean... When you first started out in television, I'm sure it wasn't as this kind of glossy and CGI. How has that been for you to be part of this kind of series where they've just it just looks fantastic? You know, as an actor, you when you're doing that kind of stuff, you don't usually don't know what the graphics are like, and so you're kind of um, you're kind of putting your work in the directors and the graphics people and the editors' hands, you know, to hopefully kind of come up with something that looks uh, halfway decent, right? I did a show called Charmed years ago, and when we did Charmed, I'm glad I mentioned that. Um, on Charmed was kind of, uh, particularly for television, was kind of the development of a lot of these graphics, and we were doing that stuff for the first time, and it was really kind of fun to kind of get creative with that kind of stuff, working on green screens and blue screens and all that kind of thing. Um, and this was a little, you know, obviously we've advanced a long way in regards to graphics since charmed um but this was also you know you kind of have to kind of put yourself out there and then you never know what it looks like um but then we i saw the results of season one and it looked really good and then you get season two i think we kind of kicked it up another notch in regards to all of that kind of stuff so uh, your character has powers because he's let me get this right. he's alien alien -ish. i mean i don't want to give too much away if you haven't seen it but like he's when you're doing that in those moments there's a bit and i remember the end of season one where you like knock someone it flashes out is that quite awkward in the moment when you're actually shooting it because you're like um yeah i know it's gonna flash but is that you know well it's it? it was kind of um because i've been doing this for quite a while and you know from charm to um fantastic four you know you kind of 
you kind of develop some skills of how you kind of make this work, you know? And so working with all the kids and we were all, you know, that power thing that you're yeah. talking about, you could see them a little apprehensive about, okay, well, what do I look like? What's it going to look, you know? And there is a concern, you know, that you're just kind of going to look like a bit of a, a bit stupid up there. You know what I mean? Um, and I kept on telling them just, if you really commit to what you're doing, there's no way you're going to look stupid no matter what happens. And then if it actually looks really good, it kind of adds to the level of things. Um, but you kind of d definitely develop a, a, a skill set of how to do that. When, when, I, when, I, when we were doing Charm, just to get back to it again so we can get some We'll talk as much as we can about Charm, please. I love that show. <laughs> Not like I'm trying to get another woohoo or anything, but, you know. Thank you. I'll take it. If, if you're going to chuck it out, I'll take it. Um, but that was, I had this great kind of opportunity as an actor to be able to work on green screen on my own. So I would work with, like, you know, three or four cameras and no, none of the other actors were there. They're all X marks and sometimes people would walk along with an X mark and I'd have to follow it because that's what the actors It was the, the thing is did. like I said, a lot of people talk about like having a stick and a tennis ball. Yeah, and, like, yeah, that's exactly. What it is. Exactly. And so you really kind of start to develop a skill of how you kind of put that story in your head and, and how you kind of um, imagine, your imagination starts to kind of run a little wild and you can kind of really start to enjoy that kind of process, you know, as opposed to feeling intimidated by, uh, by it, which you can when you first start. Have the younger cast kind of seen you as a bit of a mentor, I suppose, because they know you've got this rich history and they kind of look to you a bit for like, hey, uh, Julian, can I have a bit of advice or anything like that? You know, they're all a really talented group of kids um, and um, and they all have their own unique kind of talents as actors and as, as, as the cast members. But we certainly talked about stuff and, and we got to spend quite a few nights together shooting all that stuff. and. And, uh, you know, we had some really kind of fun conversations. Obviously, if you're somebody who's been in the business for such a long, such a long time, you have stuff to offer kind of anybody, to be honest. But, uh, you know, yeah, we certainly had some fun talking about kind of There's, the process. Marvel has obviously given us so many TV shows and films. Why do you think that fans and viewers just love it so much and why it translates so well to the screen, these stories? You know, it's a really good question. I think it's that kind of fantastical vibe about things that kind of is maybe at the core of that thing of you know the it's kind of this fantasy this this imaginative world i think that that might be the core of it but then you also have particularly with the marvel stuff um you have the i think you have a real connection with characters because stan was very specific in writing characters that people could relate to i mean if you ever look at interviews with him or or got to chat got the opportunity to talk to him the core of all of these characters came from a real place and usually it was something that all of us kind of could connect with you know what i mean whether you're bad or good it all it all kind of came from a place that was understandable as an outsider you know what i mean so i think that it kind of has that that twofold thing about it and that is i can relate to the characters but it's something that I only kind of dream about in regards to how you live your life and the way that things kind of happen. So I think it kind of covers all of these things that are really fascinating for us. You mentioned Stan, and obviously it's really sad that he passed away recently. And you probably had, you know, Fantastic Four, this series, you know. I mean, was he as, I assume he's just as nice as everyone said he is, but was he like really lovely to you? And did you have a nice experience when you met him? You know, I don't think you'd get that many people saying how lovely he was unless he was, you know. Um, he was just an incredible guy because he's invented all of this stuff and, and there's every room for, you know, the potential for him to have this huge ego or whatever you want. It just was, was obviously, you know, you'd kind of go along with it if that's the way that it was. But he was just such a kind of caring and thoughtful and, and um, humble and, and excited um, guy. I mean, you, could, you can really see, you know, even as an older gentleman, you can see how excited he is about these characters, you know what I mean? And, and so there you can see where all of these ideas are spawned from because he just found things, you know, spectacularly interesting, you know? Um, and so that's how he created all these characters is like he saw something and he envisioned something and he created something in his mind and then he put it on paper and then obviously on the, on the screen. So, you know, I, it, you kind of put him up with the, up there with those you know, guys like Disney and all these people that just created things for us that were like these gifts. He's also obviously, you know, let 
you know, let some changes be made. Like you said, the, this series is slightly, this is more of a prologue and there's slight differences from what's on the page. And we've seen that a lot with a lot of the kind of films and TV shows, slight, slight tweets, whether it's someone casting someone a different character or the change in the storyline to make it fit to be a bit more progressive and representative of the day. You, you know, but some fans might be a bit disappointed because they kind of, the, the page is law, like this should be like that. But do you think TV and film adaptions should be able to have as much leeway as they can to try and tell these stories? Well, I think you have to, in a way, you have to let them go with it. You know what I mean? I mean, I understand what it's like to be a fan and not kind of get fully what you were expecting, mm. but I think that you sometimes have to let go of that a little bit because translating from, from you know, page to screen is, is cert firstly very difficult, mm. but then secondly, you know, for instance, with this, I think you really wanted the, the, the currentness of it, right? The availability of culture and everything that we're going through at this point in time in our lives as a culture, it kind of imbues itself really nicely into the piece, right? So it's a great opportunity to, to kind of talk about what's happening today a little bit, but then use this as a kind of platform with which to launch great characters and great storytelling. So, but at the same time, you know, I, I'm, I'm fans of lots of things and sometimes I see them and go, oh, <laughs> they just got that all wrong, didn't they? <laughs> so I get that and I understand where that comes from, but I like to try to, myself, try to let go of what I perceived it to be. Marvel fandom is probably one of the biggest, one of the best ones out there. I mean, what's been your experience with, I mean, walking down the street, are you getting still people going, Victor, <laughs> like shouting Doctor Doom? Or is it more now they're like Jonah? That kind of come uh, it's been a little bit of everything, you know? I think it depends on where you are. Um, you know, I think I, I, you can walk down the street and somebody will say, hey, I know you're from Charm. Somebody will say, I know you're from Nip Tuck. Somebody will say, I know you're from Fantastic Four. And somebody will say, Runaway. So it really kind of, all of these shows, those shows that I just mentioned, have a pretty strong following and a pretty good audience. Um, and so it really kind of depends on what people connected with, you know. I mean, obviously, we all know you had the experience with Marvels. You've been in, what, 2005? That's 13 years of being in the Marvel family. Is I that mean, it? I think so. I didn't even know I was that old, actually. <laughs> I, <think. laughs> I mean, you were, you know, you were in one of the earliest kind of superhero films before the kind of MCU came back. I know, obviously, it was a different studio. How does it kind of compare seeing what you did compared to what we're seeing now on the screen? You know, I mean, I love the Fantastic Four films. So I'm just going to throw it out there. But, like, you know, is it interesting to see the differences between what we're seeing now compared to what it was when, I suppose, the kind of we were still kind of working out what the Marvel kind of aesthetic and look and narrative was going to be? So I was a big fan of the Fantastic Four movies too. Uh, although I, di I didn't always feel like I fulfilled the role of... Um, Doctor Doom is like the way that I perceived it, you know what I mean, as a fan, because I grew up as a fan as a fan of the comic book and the cartoon. <clears throat> um, but, you know, that movie was, uh, those two movies, they, they were, that was early on, you know, and um, Marvel was kind of trying to find its feet in regards to how to translate uh, those stories to the screen. And it's not an easy adaption. And it's not an easy adaption from from the novel or the or the um, comic book to a script, let alone getting that script on the screen. Does that make sense? Like, because yeah. all of the elements, right? And and uh, you know, for example, with the Fantastic Four, we really wanted to. We, uh, firstly, we weren't sure whether we it was a kids movie or whether it was an adults movie or whether it was a mix or whether, and we were trying to find that balance consistently. Um, of how do you how do you kind of approach that, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so that was that was difficult, you know. But at the same time, I kind of feel like you need to go through those um, those teething issues, otherwise you wouldn't get to where you were today. Oh, Does totally. Does that make sense? No, absolutely. I think yeah. it kind of sets the kind of benchmark of okay, this is what we've done now, and we can. What do we like about this? How can we uh, continue the the stuff that works really well and put yeah. a new one. And that's why the level, I would say the level of Marvel films or superhero films are just phenomenal nowadays. I mean, they're amazing movies. The production values are yeah. extraordinary. And so they've realized how you can turn, they've, they've basically worked out how you turn, <laughs> turn the comic <laughs> book into a fantastic looking production, right? Um, but as I said, I don't think, you know, I don't think you can, you can find that unless you've been through, 
you know, without the, f yeah. without the, and I don't call any of them failure, by the way. No, I wouldn't. Um, but without kind of falling flat in your face, mm. in a way, how do you learn how to do it differently? Mm. Or how do you kind of find a way, how do you find that? I mean, the thing is that has been really cool about it is they've been determined to, to continue with it. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was going to actually ask quickly um, about, with the Fantastic Four, obviously we had the reboot. You know, we had the one Josh Trank did. Would, yeah. you know, we've had three Spider-Mans now. There's also a new Spider-Man. You know, do you think we could have, would you be looking forward to seeing a new Fantastic Four? Or I feel like you could still potentially make a return as Doctor Doom. I mean, we well, could. Well, I think we should make a Doctor Doom movie. Right, there I we think, go. I think we should do a Doctor yes. Doom movie. All right. They, Look, they, there we go. They've said it. Right. Um, <laughs> no, seriously, because so I'm a Doctor Doom fan, right? So I grew up reading the comic book and uh, all those comic books and then and then watching the cartoons. So I was a huge cartoon watcher. I used to sneak. I was not allowed to watch television when I was a kid. And um, I used to sneak early in the morning out to the living room and turn the TV on and watch cartoons. So I was a pretty committed fan, right? Um, but I didn't feel like I got the Doctor Doom that I knew quite on the screen the way that I wanted to. Like, I always thought that he had these qualities. So, but he also kind of expanded through all of the different comic books. So I would, I don't know, I just think there's so much to mine there in regards to that character and the universes that he went through and all that kind of stuff. I don't even know if I'm answering. I'm going off on my obsession Basically, with Doctor we Doom just right decided Doctor Doom. We need, a, we need I've, a solo movie. I've you forgotten can come what back. your question is. Uh, Doctor <laughs> Doom is... Um, I've got a social question, actually. We've got uh, Stephen yeah. Hall on Facebook. Uh, he asked, of all the varied roles you've played in your career, uh, which one would you be most willing to return to if the opportunity presents itself? I feel like we just... Uh, I think we just went through that, that. Doctor Doom. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, you have had so many, so many amazing roles. I mean, I mean, Charmed, I know, is Cole. You know, Nick Tuck was just a phenomenal series. You know, is there any kind of performance that sticks out in your mind that you really like? This is one that I, 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 I nailed it. I feel like I nailed that one. Oh, All of gosh. them, obviously. Yeah, well, I, I think I nailed everything. <laughs> um, you know, I really enjoyed playing Cole on Charmed. I just really had a lot of fun with that character but I definitely feel like I nailed the Christian Troy guy I mean that was but that was a really tough it was a really challenging piece and it was tough to get him right to begin with but it was also tough to to play it every day mm. you know what I mean um so that I kind of walked away from that going oh I just I kind of <laughs> I need a holiday. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I actually did need a holiday after that, but I kind of feel like I just chucked it all out there. Um, the second season of this show, really the the kind of evolution of Jonah, which is this kind of, as we see in the first season, he's kind of this really focused, really driven, um, kind of he doesn't, doesn't let anybody get in the way kind of character. And in the second season, from pretty much the first episode on, we start to see because, as you mentioned before, he's he's an, actually an alien. Yeah. Inside. I of mean, it's body. season two. I feel like we know that right now. That's not much of a spoiler, is it? No, because we find out. In yeah. No, one. I was just wondering. I was like thinking, yeah, oh, no, damn, no, no. did I spoil no, it for no. people? Sorry if you haven't watched season one. <laughs> oh no no. <laughs> you should have. It's your own fault. <laughs> it, won't, it won't ruin it. It won't ruin anything for anybody. Um, but what we do get out of season two, it, which was really fun to play, is the kind of disintegration of the alien part of him and, and, in, and, and the development. No, actually, let me, let me say that another way. The development of the human qualities of him, which disintegrates the alien qualities of him. Does that make sense? It does you? make sense. Does. I get okay. you. I get you. Well, okay. thank you so much. Nobody else gets me. <laughs> you will once you watch the show. At least the two of us know. That's all it really is. <laughs> Love our own little moment. Um, <laughs> Julian, thank you so much. Um, guys, if you want to watch the show, as we said before, you can watch it. Uh, it's January 2nd on Sci Fi Season 2. Uh, it's a Wednesday, I believe. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Tomorrow we have in the studio, we have Ailey, Hayley Atwell. Uh, but for now, can you please give a massive round of applause to Julian McMahon? Thank you.